There is one God, and he is the maker of heaven and earth. And he made us in his image and likeness, male and female, with dignity, value, worth, and purpose. He made us to worship. And we chose to sin against him, to rebel against him, to disobey him. As a result, we are separated from God and we live under the foolish myth that to some degree we are each our own God, declaring right and wrong and living our own life by our own standards. And that God lovingly came into human history as the man Jesus Christ, fully God, fully man. That he was born of a virgin and he lived a life without sin, though he was tempted in every way as we are. And he went to the cross, and there he substituted himself. Our first parents in the garden substituted themselves for God. And at the cross, Jesus reversed that substitution and substituted himself for sinners. And when Jesus went to the cross, he took willingly upon him the sin of those who would come to trust in him. That means me. As a sinner, Jesus went to the cross and took upon himself all my sin, past, present, and future. And Jesus Christ, God, who was a man, died in my place for my sins, paying my debt to God and purchasing my salvation. Jesus' dead body was then laid in a tomb, and for three days he was buried. On the third day, a Sunday, which is why we worship on that day, Jesus rose in victory over Satan, sin, death, demons, and hell. And he commissioned us with the Holy Spirit to be missionaries telling this amazingly good news that there's a God who passionately, lovingly, continually, relentlessly pursues us. And he ascended into heaven and today Jesus is alive and well. And he's seated on a throne and he is ruling and reigning over all nations and all cultures and all philosophies and all races and all periods of time. And he is King of kings, and he is Lord of lords, and he is ruling and reigning over all people, commanding everyone everywhere to repent of everything. And he is coming again to judge the living and the dead, and those who trust in him will enjoy eternity in his kingdom of heaven forever, and those who do not will suffer apart from him in the conscious eternal torments of hell. That is what we believe. We believe in Jesus. How you doing? God bless you. Welcome to the Blaze Bible Study every Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here at Soul Winners with a Z to ORG, Facebook Live, the podcast, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Spreaker app, um, Apple Podcasts, Android, um, all the podcasting platforms that are available, you'll find the Blaze Bible Study sell our radio network and everything that's on there as well so god bless you welcome to tonight's bible study the blaze bible study if this is your first time on the blaze amen welcome i want to personally thank you for coming through hanging out with me for about a half hour uh, we say that but then it turns out to 45 minutes an hour but let's see what god has for us amen um if god turns up the heat amen as he usually does um, then we'll hang out just a little longer um, but if you missed the beginning or you missed the end or anything in between and you have to do something, thank God for technology that we could just stop and go to it later on or go back to it, review what you missed. Amen. So my name is Mr. Sam Lopez, a.k.a. DJ Sam Rock, Sam Lopez, your brother in Christ. And I'm here on the Blaze Bible Study doing what I do tonight. Um, it's a little heavy, the topic, you know, and this is something that, you know, you can ask yourself. It depends on where you are, where you find yourself in your faith. Amen. That That's the most important thing is where are you in your faith? Um, whether you believe in God, you don't believe in God, you're an atheist, agnostic, cynic, skeptic, uh, wherever you find yourself. You're into pluralism, you're into relativism, relativism you're into uh, autonomous you know, society and all that. I know those are words that make me sound smart, but they're not big words at all. You know, they're just the way society is. People flow with what they want to flow with nowadays. And Jesus is not cool anymore. It used to be respected. When I was a kid, the church, God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, everything was respected. I didn't believe in it, but I respected it because everybody else respected it. I'm talking about the 80s, 
and early 90s. But something happened in the mid 90s into the 2000s that people started throwing, um, you know, subs at God and Jesus and just started throwing the church to the curb as if they could do that. But you know what I'm talking about. Amen. I'm here to share God. I'm here to share the gospel message of my Lord and my Savior, Jesus Christ. People have their own opinion. Listen, I have the truth because why? Not because I say that God is true. Not because I say Jesus is God. It's not because what I say is what happened in my life to know that he is exactly who he says he is. Amen. In the scripture, in my life, in your life, for all those who believe, just like I believe, amen, you could testify as well. So, you know, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. The gospel was power unto salvation. And tonight we're going to be talking about would you be willing to, Listen to this. Would you be willing to risk death, risk your life for the sake of someone else's salvation? Would you be willing to risk death for the sake of someone's salvation? People are just talking about, I don't want to be embarrassed to share my gospel, to share the gospel. Amen. People are talking, worried about embarrassment. I've been there. But what about risking your life for someone to receive salvation? That's a whole entirely different thing. Amen. You're talking about, you know, exchanging your life for somebody else's life for the sake of the gospel, for the sake of them getting saved, for the sake of them getting the good news message of the Lord Jesus Christ. I just saw something right before I got on here. I saw a post and it rocked me to my core. You know, God was walking up in the Bronx, New York. I'm walking with his daughter, they say. It was his daughter, a nine-year-old, and it was a young girl. And he's walking, you know, it looks like he was going to the bodega on the corner and a car rolled up and shot the dad right in front of the daughter. And do you see the daughter running away and screaming I'm like, what kind of evil is that, man? I don't know. Of course, I want to know the details. I don't know why that happened. I'm thinking about the little girl. Unfortunately, this man, um, whatever happened, a man, he's no longer on this earth. Somebody decided to play God and take his life. But the sad part about it all, it's all messed up. It's all horrible. It's all sad. It's all messed up. But what about that little girl, man, running away from a, a shot dad right there in the street corner in the Bronx, New York? You know, would you be willing? Would you be that person that was willing to jump in front of that bullet for the sake of that girl's life, for the sake of saving her and the dad? That's a similar situation. It's a temporal situation because then you'll be saving that person for how long? You don't know if they will ever receive Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. You wouldn't know if they got saved, but you would just be willing to risk your life for someone else's. Listen, it sounds crazy, right? But do you know, and if you don't know, you're going to know by the time this is over. Do you know that someone came and died for you and me? And on top of it all, he was innocent. He didn't even deserve the death. We were guilty. We deserved what Jesus did on the cross. I deserved, let me just talk to myself, I deserved what Jesus did on the cross. Amen. I deserved to be um, hung and crucified for the evil and wickedness that I had in my heart. Amen. So will, would you be willing to risk death for the sake of someone's salvation tonight on the Blaze Bible Study? Let me give you a minute. You know what? This is a heavy topic. Let me just pray for it. Then I'll give you a minute to share this out. Um, if you have kids, children, um, you know, use wisdom because we're going to be talking about some a heavy topic like this. Um, I don't want to, you know, be the shocker of a kid's life. You know, I don't want to, you know, do this. It might be too strong for a young kid. Amen. This topic is heavy. Um, God laid it on my heart as I was wondering and thinking about what I was going to share tonight. And that's what came up. And it's a heavy topic. It's nothing light. Amen. We're going to read the scripture on it. I'm not going to talk all about it. I'm going to let the scriptures talk. Amen. Let God's word talk about it. Amen. And we'll take it from there. So if you have young kids, if you have somebody um, that's real like um, tender and, and with the gospel, um, you just use wisdom of who you want to be hearing this along with you. Amen. That's all I'm saying. Let me take a sip from this hot lemon water. I'm on this lemon water thing now. On my journey trying to kill belly fat again. <clears throat> if you follow me, you know that on a health, <clears throat> healthy um, options, nutritional honey, H-O-N-I, we have a healthier options, 
Nutritional Insights Facebook page. I'm sorry, it was my wife's page. <clears throat> and I did a 30 day challenge, gut buster challenge. I think it was two summers ago and I accomplished it. Then the next year, you know what happened, right? I fell off the wagon and then I got my gut back. So it was like almost like a waste of time. Like I did it to myself. I have no excuses, just being lazy, you know, and eating wrong. So I'm back on my 30 day um, health makeover with starting with my hot lemon water, you know, and then my intermittent fasting, just in case um, you're interested in that. You could go to the Healthier Options Nutritional Insight page um, that my wife did years ago, and then I hijacked it. It's a health and wellness Facebook page, and it has a lot of tips and tricks and just good stuff, healthy stuff, amen, to get you on your way to uh, your makeover as well. So let me pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, this topic that you placed on my heart, Lord God, and the graphic violence I saw right before you put me on to the screen, Lord God, I pray, Lord God, peace be still over that little girl that her dad got shot in the street right in front of her. Father God, I pray peace be still over her life. I pray the comfort of God over her life. I pray that she would find you, the only one that be willing to die for her, to die for her life, that she may be saved in the name of Jesus. I pray salvation over every single person right now, of that whether they know God or not, that they will reconnect with God, or if they never met Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would touch their hearts, touch their minds, and reveal yourself to them tonight as we go into your word deeper and deeper every single time. So I pray, Lord God, life. I pray, Lord God, protection, health, strength, health to the bones, strength to the flesh, strength to the bones, health to the flesh, Lord God. And I pray for Arquin angels, ministering angels, warring angels to sever any demonic influence or any demonic attack over any family member and that uh, any friend and their family that they might be facing right now. I pray against this COVID-19. I pray that we will be green, which means no more coronavirus, no more COVID-19, and that, Lord God, that you will set this nation free uh, health-wise and in other ways as well. In the name of Jesus, I pray this by faith. Amen and amen. How about I'm going to give you a minute. I'm going to give you 60 seconds. Share this out with as many people as you can. You know, be creative. Share it, share it, share it. You got 60 seconds to do it. I'll be right back. We're back. Welcome to the blaze. Well, I don't know why I keep on going to share God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Either way, I'm going to share God as well. Amen. Listen, we're going to be in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. I'm going to read from verse 1 all the way to the key verse of the night, which is verse 12. So get your Bibles out. I'm going to go old school tonight. Um, well, I have technology. I got my tablet and the, and the word with the pages in front of me just in case. Um, also, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, prayer requests, you can leave them on the live chat. If you want to, if you have something that's private and you don't want to, you know, everybody to read it and everybody to know about your situation or your, your comment or your concern or your prayer request, you could always inbox me. Amen. And also you can email me as well. And, um, hopefully somebody told me that they were having problems with the email address. Um, but I don't have problems with it. So. Um, that's my email address. Let me see if it's spelled correctly. Yeah, DJ Sandrock at Soul Winners with a Z dot O R G. Um, a lot of people just hear the word Soul Winners and they automatically in their mind they put an S after the R, but it's actually a Z. And just in case, I'll leave that up on the screen for a little bit. So Second Corinthians chapter four. Therefore, 
And every time there's a therefore in the scriptures, I heard it said like this, find out what is therefore. Amen. There's a reason why he's saying therefore. Therefore, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we do not lose heart. Verse 2, but we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. There's a lot of that going on. Be careful. But by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. And I love that word conscience. If you follow me, you know I'm always explaining what that word conscience means. There's two words in there. C-O-N, con is a Latin word for with, and science means knowledge. So he's saying that every man's com commending ourselves to every man's with knowledge in the sight of God. Every man has a, not a conscience. Every woman has a conscience. We're born with knowledge. Amen. We're born with knowledge. Knowledge of what? Knowledge between right and wrong, evil and good. It's in us already. Before you even opened up and cracked open the scripture, you already knew what was right and what was wrong. Amen. You just decided, you know, what the wrong was and you decided what the right was, but you knew there was a difference. Amen. So it's amazing to me how people say that God does not exist and they accuse God of this and accuse God of that. How could a good God allow evil in the world? That, my, my friend right there, you're talking about something better. What would be better than God? What would be a better a world than God placing us on earth? What would be a better situation? If you're using the word better, if you're using the word um, that's not right, or if you're using the word that's wrong, those, my friend right there, those are words that affirm that there has to be a moral giver. If there's a law of morality, there has to be a moral law giver. Amen? So by saying those things and, you know, God is evil or he allows evil, you're already saying something that God has already said. So you're actually affirming, you're confirming, affirming that there is a God, just, but just by speaking that way. Because otherwise, where would you know, where would you get the idea of right and wrong if there is no God? Where would you get your morality if there's not a morality giver? Amen? You're going to have four questions in your life. I have four questions in my life. You're going to have four questions in your life that you have to deal with one way or the other. And the four questions are origin. Where did we come from? Oh, we came from the planet apes or whatever. No, no, no. Where did we come from? You know that we came from humans that came from humans that came from humans all the way back to the original two human beings, Adam and Eve. Amen. Origin. What well, now? Well, now you know where you came from. What does that mean? Meaning, right? Then once you have meaning of where you came from, then you have morality. Hey, what's right and what's wrong? And then you need a morality, a moral law giver to know between to know the difference between right and wrong. And then after you have that settled, those are the questions, right? Then you have your destiny. Where do you go after you die? So it's, right, it's origin, meaning, morality, and destiny. You're gonna have to grapple with those four things one way or, an one way or another. And that's gonna be your life things. Like you're gonna go through life wanting to know those four things, if you're honest. You know, who want, who want, who would not want to know any one of those answers to any one of those questions? You know, where'd you come from? What's the meaning of life, right? What's the meaning of being a human? What does that mean? Morality, what's right and what's wrong? What's true and what's really a lie, you know? And then what happens after this is all said and done, after we check out of here, where do we go? And that'll be your destination, your destiny. Think about it. So verse three, but even if our gospel is veiled, is covered, is hidden, it is veiled to those who are perishing. I'm raising my hand right now. I didn't know what in the world this was before Jesus came and revealed himself to me. I have no clue. I had an idea and I had my opinions on all of this, right? But I, my eyes were shut. I was blind and Jesus came into my life and then I could see. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. You can also see that in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. Verse 4, whose minds the God of this age, small g, the God of this age has blinded who do not believe. Lest the light, and we spoke about light earlier today. Was it earlier? Yeah, this morning, right? We spoke about the light. Whose minds the God of this age has blinded who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ who is the image of God, should shine on them. Should shine on them. 
Verse 5, For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves, your bondservants, for Jesus' sakes. Let me read that again. Verse 5 of 2 Corinthians chapter 4. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves, your bondservants, for Jesus' sake. In other words, this is not my idea. This is not my gospel. It's not it's not my law. It's not my, you know, God shares it through me. Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, God speaks it through every single person who believes in him. Speaks it out. Amen. You know, this is not my morality. This is not my truth. This is not my gospel. This is not my world. I am not God. So therefore, Jesus Christ speaks through his people, representing the kingdom of God and letting people other than us know about who he is. He's been doing that ever since. Right. Verse six, for it is the God, capital G, for it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness. Light to shine out of what? Out of darkness. You realize in your darkest time, that's the time that God shows the brightest light. I'm just saying. Who has shown on our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. We are his glory carriers. You want to carry some glory and wait, amen, and be light on your feet as well at the same time? Carry the glory of God, amen? We are glory carriers, amen, as Christians, as Christ followers. And that's that's another whole nother topic, but it's deep because God's word is deep, amen, and it's true and it's real. It's real in every situation, not just in my situation. I almost could hear somebody saying, that's just for you. Really? It's for everybody, whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Verse 7, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. I love it. This preacher right here is saying, listen, it's not about us. It's not about me. It's not about the Christians. It's about what God did to the lives of believers. And now he's speaking through and activating his spirit through his people to reveal himself to others. And some people will be willing to die so someone else may be saved or someone else might receive the gospel message. We have missionaries right now over the world. When I say we, I'm talking about the body of Christ. There are missionaries in third world countries and other countries around the world, other places around the world that are willing to sacrifice their very own life and they're doing it for the sake of the gospel, for the sake of someone else's salvation. Amen. And I support some minister, ministers like that. I support some missionaries like that. They could tell you some so stories. Amen. Uh, I think I got it bad sometimes out here. That, that's not even uh, um, a touch of what they go through on a day to day basis, witnessing the people on streets of places that I'll leave unnamed that don't really receive Jesus Christ at all. And as a matter of fact, there's laws for people who try to reach other people with the gospel. There's laws to even get those people um, put in prison or even worse. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. So it's not about us. Trust that. Believe that. Verse 8. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. I love it. We are perplexed but not in despair. Verse nine, persecuted, but not forsaken. Cause God said he would never leave us or forsake us. Per persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Verse 10, always. And when God says always, ladies and gentlemen, always means always. When God says all the time. When God says always, when God says forever, when God says those type of words, he's the only one qualified to say an always. You know, when I argue sometimes with my wife or with anybody, so you always act this way. That's not my place. I'm not God. I can't use an always word. I could repeat his always word to somebody else that God will always give us a chance, that God will always save, that God will always live, that God will always speak the truth, that God will always perform signs, miracles, and wonders, that God will always reveal himself to whomever calls upon his name. That's a God word. Always, forever, all of those words, those are God words. 
always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. That's a whole entirely different Bible study. Amen. That's another deep, this whole passage. And God said, yeah, deal with it. I'm like, wow, all of that, <laughs> that's a lot. But yeah, he wanted me to deal with it. Amen. Because it's for someone else's sake. It's for someone's salvation. It's for the sake of the gospel message for somebody else to get this right now. Verse 11, for we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus sake. You know, these are these are not really like my memory scriptures. I'm not trying to read this and memorize this all the time, you know, um, but it's true. And for we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. You want to follow Jesus? You want to be used by God? Amen. You want to communicate with God? You want to have fellowship with God? Then we have to fellowship in the suffering as well. Not very popular. Not a lot of people preaching this. I'm an evangelist, so... I guess I could stir up the pot, then turn this off, and then your pastors will have to deal with it, amen, when you approach them with this conversation. But it's the word, so I have to deal with it. It's the word, so I know it's true. It's the word, so I believe it. It's the word, and it could change your life, amen, and it would change our mindset. There's no brainwashing. There's no forcing in the scripture. Is This apostle is really laying it out, and he's making it plain. He's making it bare when he says, knowing that he... Oh, wait, wait, let me back up. So then death is working in us, but life in you. Amen. So we're pouring it all out as believers in Christ to unbelievers. We're pouring it out to people who hate Jesus, pouring it out to people who uh, have a misconception of what a Christian is, who Jesus is, who God is, why did Jesus die? You know, these are the things that to us as believers, that's basic. We know why Jesus died. Just don't understand it. I don't understand why he did it. I know that he did it. I just don't understand it. What type of love is that? God demonstrated his own love. That's why I can't understand his love because it's God's love. Amen. Yet he loved me first. So now I can learn how to love others and love him back. Amen. He gave his life for me. He died for me. So I'm going to give my life for him. You know? willing sacrifice amen a living sacrifice romans chapter 12 type of sacrifice amen unto the lord verse 13 and since we have the same spirit of faith amen you christians you born again okay keep on calling us out we have the same spirit amen so if you call me a, a born again then you could call my brother in, in christ a born again you could call my wife a born again my daughter a born again you could tell my pastors they're born again you could tell us all we're born again it's not an insult. You want to call me born again? You want to call me whatever? Just, I don't like when people call me religious. I know people think this is all a religion. And I used to think so too, until I realized it's not about religion. Religion didn't save me. Religion don't love me. Religion didn't change me. No, a relationship with God, the Father, God, the Son, God, Holy Spirit is who changed me. What do you mean? You serve three gods? No, three beings, one God. Amen. The Trinity, the triune God, amen? Three persons, one being. I'm a, what kind of a being am I? I'm a human being. It's not a trick question. What kind of being are you? You're a human being. Who am I? I'm Sam Lopez. Who are you? And you say your name. Are we the same? No, different. You might be a woman, I'm a man, but we're one being. So I could have Sam Lopez is a human being. Then my son, Jay Lopez, is a human being. My daughter, Sela Lopez, is a human being. Three persons, same being. I'm not trying to explain the Trinity. I'm just giving you an example. Amen. Uh, three persons, one being. And we are, we have that too as human beings. <laughs> Amen. All different, but one being. If there was a hundred people in the studio right now, everybody would be different, right? But we're all one being. So we got 101, one being, right? That was, that was my attempt to try to give you an example of what the Trinity would kind of look like. The Trinity is all a God thing. You know, mathematically, you can't even put three in one. But God did it because he can. He's God. 
And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, and this is what's written, I believed and therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak. Amen. You can see that in Psalms chapter 116, verses 10, and in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 1. Verse 14. I went by my verse, didn't I? This is good. Let me just hear, end it here. Knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and will present us with you. Amen. For all things are for your sakes, that grace, having spread throughout the many, may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. So in other words, this whole thing is for somebody else. I'm thinking, man, God, you saved me. That's it. I'm good. You know, um, then he put the spirit in me, his spirit that made me like I, I started chasing after my family with the gospel. Started chasing after my mom, everybody with the gospel. I was a little radical with it, but amen. Some of it, some of it hit good ground. Some of them seeds of faith, so seeds of eternal life hit good ground. When I went to go to my grandmother to reach her with the gospel, the grand, my grandmother on my mother's side, amen, um, she received that thing. After years of being in spirituality and doing some spiritual things, she finally realized that she had really no relationship, no meaningful relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Knowing about somebody and actually knowing somebody. Knowing about a person and actually knowing a person Two different things if you know about Jesus or as far as you heard about him amen you ever heard about a person but you don't really know them um, that's the story of my life I literally years ago when I was working in this corporation I got into a situation with a big account uh, a lady disrespected me started talking down to me I wasn't having a good morning I got in the flesh spoke back she said she was gonna go tell her boss I said listen you could tell the boss the president your preacher, whatever, tell them all. I was I was upset, so she called my boss, well, one of my bosses, and said just that and the third that I threatened her and all that, which was a lie. So I'm having now I'm in front of my HR manager and in front of one of the managers, one of the bosses of the so many bosses up in that office, and he said, "I we heard about you." <laughs> I was like, you heard, "What did you hear about me? We we know about you. We know about you." So in other words that they were trying to confirm that what this lady was saying was accurate. That wasn't the case. The case was that account was a big account. They didn't want to lose that money and they had to do something. And they said, and then he said, do you realize how much money we will lose if we lose this account? I calculated, I gave him the, uh, the amount. I said, yeah, I know the amount. I see the invoices every week. So make a long story short, he heard something about me, but he himself, we never had a conversation like that. He didn't, he knew about me. He just didn't know me. There's a difference between knowing about a person and knowing a person. I know my wife. If I would have just known about her, we would have never got married and vice versa. If you know about the Lord Jesus Christ, that's cool. You know about him, but you know what's the, where the power is in the Lord Jesus Christ is when you get to know him, your personal Lord and Savior, not my not Sam's Lord and Savior, not Sam's God, not that church's God, not that preacher's God, not that pastor's God, not them and us. No, it will be us completely when you get to know. That's why we call ourselves brothers and sisters in Christ. We have the same father. Amen. Same faith. So so we live in the faith of death. Second Corinthians 412. But this has resulted in eternal life in eternal life for who? For me? No, for you. The person that's on the other end of this. The person that's receiving this message. The person that God is ministering to right now. Trust me, I'm being ministered to. Every time I read the scriptures, I'm being ministered to. Amen? And as I start going and speaking, a lot of things I'm saying, I never knew it was going to come out of my mouth. So that means someone is speaking through me because I don't know what the next sentence was going to be. No script. If you notice and if you know me, you know I don't come down here. Sometimes if I have something that I have to really concentrate on, I'll bring some notes into the studio. But 90% of the times, I'm relying and trusting on God to speak. If he's real, right, he will speak. And Lord, thank you, Jesus, he always speaks. Amen. He always speaks because we're talking about a real, genuine, holy, faithful, loving, just God. Amen. He's able. 
He's so able to speak through a person. To speak. He spoke through a donkey in the Old Testament. Amen. He'll speak to the prophets. He'll speak through the evangelists. He'll speak through the pastors, teachers. He'll speak to the apostles, through the apostles. Amen. He'll speak. Amen. Because he is real, alive. His word, <clears throat> sharper than any double-edged sword. His word is alive and it's active. Amen. And his word is able to do what he wants his word to do. So going back to the original question, I know I'm getting all excited. Would you be willing to risk death for the sake of someone's salvation? Think about it really good. Amen. Because if you don't trust and believe that this is all true, why would you? Why would anybody in their right mind that is honest with themselves and say, I don't really believe in this Christianity stuff. You know, so I'm not really, you know, so you won't be willing to die. Why would you be willing to die for something that you say is a lie? Why would you be willing to, although on the other end of that coin, I just got this, people do it all the time. They believe in things that are not even true. They believe in things that are not even real. Amen. But they are willing to share with everybody. You you would not believe the type of stories people share with me when they're trying to say my God is not real. And then they go ahead and try to explain my God away with things that are like science fiction, aliens, all the civilizations that came here before, you know, Jesus and all this other stuff. I hear I have to. I don't want to laugh at nobody. I don't want to disrespect. I have to listen. That's why I know these things. Uh, they'll tell you and explain Jesus away, explain God away real quick, easy. For them, it's easy. Oh, yeah, you know, there's no God. But then when you come out with some evidence, a changed life that that will be right in front of them, the gospel message, the whole, you know, four themes of the of the scriptures. When you tell them about creation, when you tell them about the fall of man, when you tell them about the need for a redeemer, and when you tell them about the restoration of everything to come back, they look at you like you have four heads and like six eyes or four heads and one eye. <laughs> they look at you like you're crazy and you're looney tune because we read it. The God of this age has blinded those, um, has put a veil over those eyes of the people who are perishing. Amen. And I'm not taking shots at nobody. I was one of those people that were perishing. And if it was not for God and his grace and his mercy over my life, amen, I would never be on this side of things telling anybody about no gospel. Listen, if I'm talking about it, that means I know something about it. I know a little something, something about it, right? If I'm living it and I'm breathing it and I'm talking it and I'm witnessing to other people, I, I know what I'm saying because I experienced not only the word of God over my life and in my life, but in my wife, my brother, my mom, uh, my sister, like I could go on a whole list of people and they will be able to testify and tell you from all over the country, the same, different stories, different testimonies, but all giving glory to the same God. Not all oh, um, Jesus from the South, not Jesus from the North, not Jesus from the East, not Jesus from the West. No, we're talking about Jesus, a holy God. Amen. I'm not talking about a white Jesus. I'm not talking about a black Jesus. I'm talking about a holy Jesus. What about that? Amen. And that's why I get excited. Because if it had not been for him and his grace and his mercy on me and in my life, where would I be? Well, I got a good idea what I, where I would be. I can't prove where I would be, but I got a good idea. And it would be nowhere near this gospel message. Amen. So would you be willing to die right? For the sake of someone else's salvation. Amen. That's a question that I'll leave between you and the Lord. Amen. And what about embarrassment? You know, a uh, quick story and then I'll leave you here. God had told me one time and amongst other times that I, I just told him, no, that's, there's no way I could do that. Uh, I was working for, I believe, DHL uh, delivery service and I had to deliver a package and right across the street from where I was delivering a package, um, there was this man I think I was in DHL since I was one of no DHL because I was in, in the Quaker Town area and there was a veterans home or a get together with veterans you know U.S. soldiers that sacrificed their their limbs and life for our country amen and one of their men had um, one leg missing from the knee down no leg he was in a wheelchair and I heard you hear me speaking right I heard the Holy Spirit tell me to go over and lay hands on that man and his leg is going to come back. He's going to walk again. You know what I did? It sounds crazy, right? 
for a person right now that doesn't believe in God, they're looking at this screen and say, yeah, that dude has lost his mind. Well, listen, I heard the voice and it wasn't my voice. I wasn't talking to myself. Why would I challenge myself to do something like that? It was the voice of the Lord. And I knew it was, you know what I told God? I said, what if he doesn't get the new leg? I'm going to feel embarrassed. I'm just being honest. So I wasn't worrying about his uh, miraculous healing. I wasn't worrying about his salvation. I wasn't worrying about his life. I was being so selfish. And I was born again. I was being so selfish. And it's worrying about me being embarrassed. If if it would not happen. As if I had, if I had the power to do that. It was God's power that would have did it. And God said he was going to do it. And I missed an opportunity. Amen. Because I said no. Well, like I said, God's a God of grace and mercy. Years later, he asked me to do something for somebody else. Um, and this time, uh, in a full gas station in a store area where you can get your munchies next to where I live currently, uh, I said, God, I'm, I'm going to do this. Uh, and I still felt embarrassed, people looking at you, you know what I mean? I walked up to a man that his face, he was behind the counter. I knew him. He was my customer personally, you know, I knew him and um, his face was paralyzed, stuck like this. And he's looking at me, he could hardly talk. And I said, what happened? Because the, the week before his face was fine. Week after, I used to see him every week, his face was paralyzed. And he was telling me that he don't know what happened. He just woke up like that. You know, he was trying his best to talk to me. and. Um, I said, wow, that's crazy. Then I heard the voice said, well, lay hands on his face and he will be healed. Uh, I said, hey, do you know, you know about who Jesus is? He goes, yeah, he took out a piece of, he took a picture of, you know, you ever saw the Jesus, I should have put a picture up here with the heart in the middle and he's European with the blue eyes. That Jesus, he pulled that picture out and said, yeah, I know this Jesus. He was from a, 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 a part of the world that they have over 300 million deities and they'll throw Jesus in there as, you know, as some kind of deity. But he said he knew him. But remember what I said earlier, he really just knew about him because if he knew him, he would have turned to him and not waited for me to do anything for his face. But anyway, he said, yeah. And he showed me the picture. And I said, you know about him, but I really know him. He says, you really do. You really know Jesus? I said, yeah. I said, do you want me to pray and ask Jesus to heal your face? This man was smart. He wasn't stupid. He was like, yes, in front of all the people in there. Me, Sam, regular Sam, <laughs> laid hands on this man's face and he miraculously recovered. No, he didn't miraculously recover. I'll be lying if I said that. He's, it seemed like nothing happened. Well, he's a weekly customer. The following week, I went to go follow up. I was there anyway. I saw half his face turn normal. And I said, um, oh, wow, you're doing a little better. And he's just staring at me, not saying a word, just looking at me like this. And I said, well, what's the problem? He goes, when you prayed for me last week, I felt heat go through my body, energy like I never felt before. And it went all the way to my face. And I felt my face getting back together. He says, but I don't believe in your Jesus. I said, but I do. And I prayed the second time and God healed the paralyzed face. They don't want to waste that opportunity. Amen. So because I feel embarrassed, I'm not going to do something. No more. Pray for me. Amen. There's been other times that God has told me to do things. And because of my pride or selfishness or whatever, I wasn't willing to die for someone else's salvation. So if that's you. You find yourself in that spot. Like I'm not, I'm not going to die for no, I am not even going to share the gospel. I'm a Christian. I'm good. I'm not going to share. It's embarrassing. It's too much. How about people reject me? Listen, welcome to the crew. If you're a believer in Christ, welcome to the rejects. Amen. They're going to reject our message. Just don't take it too personal because it's not my gospel. It's not your gospel. It's the Lord's gospel. Amen. They're not rejecting what we're saying per se. If we're preaching the true gospel, they're rejecting Jesus, his message and him. And that's, I mean, I know it's sad sometimes, well, all the time it's sad when somebody rejects the truth, but hey, people have 
choice. Amen. If God is really a God of love, amen, he has to extend our will. He has to give us our choice. We have to choose, right, to love God or to not God, to not love God. Choose the world or choose the Lord. Amen. This is a choice, all about choice. Amen. So I hope you got something out of this. Listen, I'm out of here. Um, uh, pray for me because it's hard for me to sleep at night. I stay up to like 2 or 3 in the morning. I'm just thinking things. My mind is racing. I got some decisions to make. Um, I'm trying to, I might revamp the studio one more time. Amen. And um, low willing, if everything goes right with the plan that I have here, uh, I want to make it a reality soon. Low willing. And I, and I thank you for the support, um, for the supporters that allow me to even think those things, right? Um, because I don't do it. If you know me personally, you know I don't do things for a lot of personal gain. For sure, you know that if you know me personally. But because the support, supporters that have been supporting the ministry allow me to help other ministries and other families, God has been just doing things um, incredible in my life and in my family's life. Amen. And it's not to brag about. Only that I can boast about is Jesus and what he's doing in, in the life of every single person that believes. Amen. Pastor Michael Jakes, powerful as usual. God bless you, sir. Jay Walker, love you too, bro. God bless you, man. God bless you. So listen, I'm out of here. That's all I had to say. You can read it up in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Read it for yourself, man. Do yourself a great favor. Amen. Don't just know about something. Try to get to know it. Amen. And listen, I know a little bit about this. I know a little about that. I studied other religions. I studied other cultures and all that stuff. But none of those other cultures, other than the gospel message of the Lord, other than the word of God, has been able to satisfy the four questions. And, and coherently, like, it made sense. Amen. And it sticks. Origin, meaning, morality, and destiny. Jesus Christ answered all of those four questions on the cross of Calvary over 2,000 years ago. Origin, where he come from, where did we come from. Amen. Meaning, now that you know where you came from, what does it all mean? <laughs> Sounds like that sample. What does it all mean? Uh, morality, right and wrong, evil and good, right? Morality, but how do you know what's right and what's wrong? How do you know what's a lie and what's the truth? Well, you have to have a moral giver. Amen. And then you have, when it's just all said and done on this side of eternity, on this planet, then you want to know what, what happens after you die. And that's destiny. You believe it or not. Jesus answered all four of those questions on the cross of Calvary. Amen. Read it for yourself. It's in all the Gospels, the early writings of the Gospels. Amen. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is in the book of Acts, how the apostles would use throughout their nation, throughout their country, and how they were involved in ministry and all of that. You can see the resurrected Jesus showing up to 500 people at one time. Some people, somebody told me, oh, they were all hallucinating. I said, man, listen, I used to smoke weed and I never had a <laughs> hallucination like that. And as a matter of fact, if five people had the same hallucination while we were smoking or whatever, that's a mir miracle itself. If we all saw the same thing at one time in the same place and the same time, that's a miracle itself. So I would have to believe in miracles. Either way, on both sides of the spectrum. Amen. Even though we may not see eye to eye, you will always be my brother. Amen. Amen. And I'm hoping, you know, I, just let me do the believing because uh, you can't stop my prayers, bro. So I pray that God will reveal himself to you because you're right. We probably won't meet eye to eye. Amen. But my prayer is that you will meet eye to eye, not with me, with the Lord and Savior Jesus. And he will reveal himself to all those whomsoever, it don't matter what you've done, where you've been, what's your background, what's your status, you know, it don't matter. So Jesus, if he reveals himself to you, he reveals himself to me, he reveals himself to millions of people around the world, he'll, he'll, he'll convince. He does the convincing, right? He does the saving. He does the transformation. I just speak the, uh, speak the message. I'm just the messenger. Amen. So I'll be praying that all my friends and all my family and everybody will get the revelation of who Jesus is. Amen. And God, that's, a, you know, it takes off the, the weight off my shoulders because I really thought I had to be the one doing all the convincing and arguing and all that stuff. 
And I realized a long time ago, I said, wait a minute, how did I get saved? Uh, nobody argued me into the kingdom. I made my own decision. Amen. And then God proved me. He proved me wrong because I'm, I'm I was calling him out saying he wasn't real. And then, yeah, he changed my life. And I was like, oh, that's crazy. So, yeah, I'll be praying for you. Thank you for your honesty, bro. So I'm out of here. God bless you. God keep you. Remember always that God is good. If you find it in your heart to support this ministry, the website is on the bottom to the right. Amen. Go visit. Find out what the ministry is a little bit about. Amen. Definitely not about getting money. My, my main objective is to save souls. You know, when I was in the music industry, I had a dream of selling a million, million sold, like million CDs, million, you know, downloads. But now since I'm born again, a believer, amen, I want a million souls saved, amen, for the glory of God. And then when it's all said and done, hit me up in my mansion in heaven, man. It's going to be speakers in the wall, you know, floor is going to be like with speakers on it too. It's going to be a big party, man. Come to my mansion. I don't know about everybody else's mansion, but my mansion is going to be popping. It's going to be lit because he, God says he will give you the desires of of your heart and my desire is to play music have music flowing fellowship for all eternity hanging out for all eternity with my brothers and sisters in the lord amen and that to me that's my heart's desire and god knows my heart's desire because he placed that desire in my heart amen so it's like you know he did a, a surgery you came a long way my friend god bless you amen amen god is good amen and he he's the one who allows me um, to breathe and live and have my being amen i'm a human being before i was a human doing amen so god bless i'm out of here till the next time peace blazing bible studies